God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Good morning and welcome to the Church of Christ Congregational. It is nice to be with all of you this morning. Whether you are worshiping here in the sanctuary or from the comforts of your home, whether you are worshiping right now or later on in the day or in the week, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This coming Saturday, March 19th, we will be holding a takeout lasagna dinner. Orders can be placed on our website and they can also be placed by calling the office. If you would like to take part in this, which I strongly suggest you do, they are delicious. Um, you need to get your orders in by Tuesday at five o'clock to allow enough time for ingredients to be purchased and everything to be all set. So don't miss out on that. You can check out our website or give the office a call and leave a message. I think, I think that, that is all of the announcements for today, but I am very excited and I do have a list of celebrations. Any money donated in honor of celebrations this month will go to Greenwood's Counseling and Referral Services. And Laureen would like to celebrate that on February 25th, she became a great grandma. Mark would like to celebrate that Jessa Rose turned 18 and has been accepted to NYU and that Megan also turned 21. And I would like to celebrate the deacons and faith formation team who have been helping to clean out our hidden and not so hidden nooks and crannies in both buildings. Um, we do a great job of accumulating a lot of stuff. So I would like to thank them for their tireless efforts to kind of put us back um, to simplify and to clean out. So thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yesterday I celebrated a birthday and um, much to, um, I, I did not turn 50, if there was any question out there. Um, not yet, not yet. Um, 
no, but thank you all for the birthday wishes. I believe that that is all. So I invite you to take a deep breath, settle into your seats and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. We continue our movement through this season of Lent this week with another kind of letting go. This week, we lament that so much in life is out of our control. This is frustrating to us. And so sometimes we have been tempted to believe that the sayings that tell us that if we just think positively, we can turn it all around. Yet our experience tells us that this doesn't always work. Let us turn ladder climbing toward the expectation of a perfect life into garden tending, nurturing what is and embracing our holy and good enough lives. Disappoints us, and yet God is still here. 
us call on God by praying together the prayer found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Holy One, our light and salvation, we call out to you, sometimes afraid of the adversaries in life. Shelter us in days of trouble. Lead us on level paths. Open us this day to your grace and peace. Transform our frustrations into simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able in body or in spirit and join us in our gathering hymn number 446 in the Christian Praise Hymnal, which is the Red Bound Book. Beloved ones, even Jesus got frustrated when folks didn't behave as he would have liked. We probably aren't receiving death threats from Herod as Jesus was, but our well-being could be threatened by the idea that if we just try hard enough, are nice enough, say the right things, life will always go our way. We run around in so many directions, trying to herd the chicks into some imagined semblance of perfect formation. Have you ever tried to herd chicks? It's not easy. What if we could let go of needing all the things and all people to be just so, and instead learn to dance with the unfolding of that which is not ours to control? Let us take a moment of silent reflection.
Hear this compassionate word from the psalmist. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Know that already God is offering us the freedom from feeling alone and fixing what feels oh so wrong with this world. Inviting us to let go of the need to be God so that we might recognize that God is with us, offering courage in difficulty. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus, we are being forgiven even now. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. Praise be to God. Amen. Good morning, Lillian. It's great to see you again. Good morning. I am glad that you are here because we are going to have so much fun this morning planting some plants. I have been looking forward to this activity all week. Have you ever really looked forward to something you just can't wait for the day to get there so you can do it? Me too. I can barely sleep last night in anticipation. So let's get these plants and I'll get you it. I invite you to be in the spirit of prayer. Lord, open your word by your Holy Spirit so that we, like Abraham, may believe your promises to us. Amen.
Reading from the Hebrew Scriptures, Genesis 15, 1 through 12, and 17 and 18, found on page 11. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be great. Very great, even. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the Lord of the God came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, oh, Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. He brought them all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other but he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And as the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. And when the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. I care for your free 
Our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35, and can be found on page 66 in the New Testament section of your Pew Bible, if you would like to follow along. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finished my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. You were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Here ends our reading. A couple of years back at Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center, our group of family camp campers had the opportunity to go experience the High Ropes Challenge course. For some, just the words high rope course is enough to induce a full on panic attack. But for me, the hard part wasn't climbing into the air or standing on top of the platform looking out across the farmland. The hardest part and most scariest part for me was coming back down. You jump into nothing and pray to God your harness works. You have to let go of the pole and jump in order to return to the ground. What is it about letting go that is so scary? For me in this situation and in others, the act of letting go often means having no control. When we feel like we aren't in control, we can become paralyzed, fixated almost, on gaining control and returning to that place of solid ground, both literally and metaphorically. We suddenly become unable to live our lives as wholehearted people of God. In our scripture this morning, Jesus finds himself in a situation that he cannot control and is frustrated. Jesus is frustrated and distraught that his message is not sinking in. Jesus has such love for God's children, for us. And like the people in the crowd that day, sometimes we ignore it or are oblivious to it altogether. The image of a mother hen is used to describe Jesus's love for us. A mother hen whose chicks are oblivious to the dangers around them. Jesus has no control over this. And he laments. He cries out, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Debbie Thomas writes, his is the lamentation of long thwarted and helpless yearning. How often have I desired to gather you? It is a lamentation for all that could have been in this chaotic, clueless world. It is a lamentation for the real limits we live as with, we live with as human beings the lasting wounds, the hopes that come to nothing. Sometimes, like Jesus the mother hen, we can't do what we most desire to do. We can't give what we deeply long to give. We can't save the loved ones we ache to save. Despite rejection and lack of control over the situation, though, Jesus continues on his path still trying to gather us in. Being rejected is hard, especially when it is being done by those you love. Jesus knows this feeling all too well. He is not in control. And what is about to happen to him is beyond human control. He cannot get out of the situation. He is literally walking towards death, yet he continues on to walk with the people and offer all he has to them. 
He also doesn't allow that which he cannot control get in the way of his ministry. Herod wants him dead, but Jesus carries on with his mission, doing his thing, being himself. Jesus was too busy doing God's work to be worried about what Herod was going to do. Deborah Mumford reminds us that rather than flinching or giving up at the first sign of resistance, we can do as Jesus did and lean into further into our tasks, telling our detractors that we intend to continue our work and then do just that. What would leaning into our tasks during this season of Lent look like? There are three pillars of Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, which in simpler terms is a fancy word for service or giving. What if we tried to loosen our grip on our need for control and made room for these three pillars in our lives? Without our worrying and rushing and ladder climbing, what if we leaned further into our task of making more room for Jesus in our lives. I'm going to share with you an example of each of these pillars that we can do during the season of Lent. They are only examples and the examples are endless. One example of a prayer practice is the daily examine. The daily examine is an ancient way to reflect on your day. To practice it, you answer four questions. Question one, was there something memorable that happened to you today? Question two, was there a time when you felt close to God or the spirit today? Question three, was there a time when you felt far from God or the spirit today? And question four, what from today are you grateful for? You may then end the exercise with a few moments of silence and then say amen. The second pillar of Lent is fasting. Tracy Smith, author of the book Faithful Families for Lent, Easter, and Resurrection, encourages us to instead of focusing on giving something up, focus on simplifying one aspect of your life. Then instead of focusing on what is being given up or taken away, the focus is on these practices is what is, sorry, the focus of these practices is what is on added or appreciated as part of this task. For example, instead of giving up screens or screen time, try heading outside. Instead of giving up soda, try drinking water. Instead of giving up meat, try enjoying more fruits and vegetables. Instead of giving up shopping or spending, try to make something that you might normally buy. These are just a few examples of an endless list. And the third pillar of Lent is almsgiving or service, or how we'll think about it today, giving. To give alms is to give money or food to the poor. A few examples are to give a box of favorite things to a family that is in need not a box of what you have left over or in abundance, but a box of things that you enjoy, your favorite cereal, your favorite shampoo, the best book that you've read. You could bring that box to our food pantry or to one of the many local organizations that work with communities of people. Another example is to give to nature. This can be done in a number of ways. Perhaps start a garden, or start using reusable containers and water bottles. And one last example is to help give one another freedom from unjust systems that may be oppressing them by writing letters or postcards for justice and sending them to our local <coughs> officials. All of these are simple acts that we can do that will help us lean further into Lent and into our relationship with Jesus. Life isn't always going to go our way. We can't control the outside forces of the world, but we can move forward and know that God is with us every step of the way, ready to welcome us with warmth and love.
Deborah Thomas explains this beautifully. She writes, what Jesus the mother hen offers is not the absence of danger, but the fullness of his unguarded, open-hearted, wholly vulnerable self in the face of all that threatens and scares us. What he gives is his own body, his own life, wings spread open, heart exposed, shade and warmth and shelter at the ready. What he promises at great risk to himself is the making of his very being into a place of refuge and return for his children, for all of his children, even the ones who want to stone and kill him. When we cling to our need to be in control, we close ourselves off to God and to one another. We need to loosen our grip, open our hands, let go and jump making room for God to fill that space with warmth, love, and protection. We need to remember Jesus's example of determination and carry on, leaning into that which brings us closer to Jesus, knowing that we never walk this road alone. Amen. Sanctification, or the process of being set apart or made holy, is a theological concept that has been greatly debated over time. Are we made holy in a once and done kind of way? Or are we always simply moving in that direction based on our merits? It is as if once the debate is settled, then we can know what to do and control the outcome of goodness for ourselves. And yet, if we worry less about our own sanctification and more on treating the world, the planet, and all the creatures, especially those who are suffering, as holy and worthy of our love, then we will be acting on what we can control, sharing what we have with others.
Let us continue to be in the spirit of prayer. Holy One, we have put all our eggs into the basket of your love and faithfulness. We believe in new life because of you. You have promised to shelter us in our troubles and to raise us up above the troubles that push us, tempt us, and work against us. We have seen you here, listening for your voice through scripture and prayer, seeking something that is life-giving, wound healing, and truth speaking. We wish that you would teach us your ways, lead us down paths of light, give us the courage to wait with patience, trusting in your grace and power. Help us to see that you are doing a new thing, even if it is hard for us to perceive it. We are grieving what has been lost. We are afraid of what the future might bring, but we want to worship you and do your work in the world. Send your mercy and your grace. Help us to trust you more deeply, knowing we are safe with you, that you are a source of light and light. Today we pray especially for Andrew, and Peg. We pray especially for Nadine and for Anthony. And we also pray for those we name now aloud or in the comments. Holy One, today we pray a prayer of peace. God who sees the weakness and acts of naked aggression. God who feels the fear in moments of acute helplessness. Cure this warring madness and shield all who fall in harm's way. Leech the poison from the mind that thinks strength is shown in a bullying force. And may an equal strength and solidarity give resolve to those whose aim is to protect and respect, not just the ones we call our own but all with whom we can share a better, more peaceful world. For all of these prayers, both spoken aloud and those on our hearts, we ask in the name of the one who longs to take us under his wing and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The hungry are invited to feast at God's table where our mourning turns to dancing. Our affliction is met with comfort and our rejection turns to belonging. Out of God's gift of abundance, we offer gratitude. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in praise. Offerings can be made here in the sanctuary by leaving it in the basket on the table behind the last pew. You can also make a donation or make your pledge payment online on our website, www.goshenchurch.com or you can send a donation in the mail to P.O. Box 216. Please join me by standing as you are able, in body or in spirit, in the singing of the doxology, slightly different from the one traditionally sung here, but a variation that is closely connected to our theme.
offer prayer on the offerings that have been made and will be given today. Let us pray. Generous God, in light of your extravagant blessings, no matter what the state of the world or our imperfect lives, we offer our gifts and ourselves and know that you transform what we plant into the produce of love. Amen. I invite you to remain standing if you are able and join us in our closing hymn number 505 in the New Century Hymnal, which is the Black Bound Book. I invite you to join me in our common commission. Let us now go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no person evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, and loving and serving the Lord and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lynn is now going to offer a blessing for when you realize everyone is struggling. Blessed are you who see things clearly where struggle is everyone's normal. You walk among the fellowship of the afflicted, a club no one wants to join. And while this life isn't shiny, it does come with superpowers. Superpowers of everyone, the existential courage that gets you back up after another fall, and the deepened awe at the beauty and love that can be found among life's rubble. 
Like flowers that grow from the cracks of the sidewalk, these virtues blossom in you. And thank God for you. Blessed are all of us who struggle, for we are in good company and will never walk alone. <laughs>